Bitcoin as a currency on the Internet, peer to peer, managed by the participants mm -hmm. in it is uh, the is perfect libertarian solution to the money you. enigma. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with George Gilder from Freedom Fest 2014 in Las Vegas. George Gilder is the author most recently of Knowledge and Power. He is lately passionate about Bitcoin, so we're going to find out what's turning him on about this cryptocurrency. George, thanks for talking to us. Great to be here. Uh, you know, you have a, a history of being ahead of the curve. You helped start the Reagan Revolution and the Supply Side Revolution with books like Wealth and Poverty. Uh, you were way ahead of the curve on the telecomputer, you know, which turned into the Internet, uh, about how when things get really small and, uh, you know, they get more and more powerful in the telecosm. Now you are absolutely passionate about Bitcoin. What was your aha moment that you, okay, Bitcoin is, is the, the deal of the future? Well, I just written Knowledge and Power uh, about information theory. Yeah. And I figured that uh, Shannon's information theory cause was perfect instrument for creating a network that mm -hmm. could efficiently transmit, transmit bits and bytes. Right. However, to have a civilization, you need more than just bits and bytes. You need contracts, you need transactions, mm -hmm. you need provable facts, you need titles, you need notarizations, you need identities, you need all these other factors that really can't be accommodated very well on the internet. So you have to have banks and all these other outside channels to conduct transactions. You have this comedy of bogus uh, mm -hmm. contracts uh, as we were supposed to sign as you proceed. Right. Uh, yeah, you and click the button, you accept uh, with uh, which company yeah, reads, yeah. who the I hell mean, the, yeah. the internet is full of junk. Right, right. And and it pretends that a lot of its stuff is free, which right. of course is a lie, so yeah. it's full of lies. It's a hustle. Okay. It's a lot of the characteristics of the internet are uh, the result of just having a pure uh, Shannon information uh, without that. higher uh, uh, Shannon information. Shannon, inf Shannon identifies information exclusively by its surprisal, okay. unexpected bits. Right. That's how you measure okay. uh, information and bandwidth across the net. And it was Shannon's a great genius, mm -hmm. and and he created the perfect theory to, for the network layer. Mm -hmm. But as you know, uh, you need more than uh, three layers in the network. You got to have a whole apparatus on top of the mm -hmm. network in order to actually conduct a provable transactions. So, how does Bitcoin? Conduct, uh, how well, does Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a breakthrough in information theory that allows, without reference to trusted third parties, people mm -hmm. outside the internet, to conduct provable transactions, mm -hmm. time-stamped transactions that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Can't be faked, can't be can't changed. Can't be faked, yeah. can't be duplicated, so can't be... Bitcoin uh, is the currency the internet deserves. It's the currency the internet okay. deserves and needs. And a way we have vir a real reality, for lack of a better term, in the internet, and now, but you always had to step out of the internet in order to get money, or it's kind of like you're at college, yeah. you're always going, hey, mom, send me some yeah, food, yeah, send me some good, money. Good, yeah. And now you're saying we, we've we left home, like the internet can self-suffice That's right. in terms of transactions. And it's also a better, better currency. It has a wonderful insight that the world is deflationary under capitalism. Okay, yeah, tell us about, you know, this, because we hear this all the time, well, deflation, you know, the only thing worse than inflation is deflation. Why is it a good thing that we're, that Bitcoin because, is, or capitalism is deflationary? Capitalism is deflationary. Yeah. I, I, you know, I write about learning curves. I've been writing mm -hmm. about them for 50 years, I guess. Maybe uh, sometime you'll, you'll finally get it right. right? <laughs> and, uh, and learning curves are the characteristic of capitalism. Mm -hmm. I have finally gotten it right. Yeah. I've figured out that wealth is knowledge. And you can tell that because, uh, you know, the Neanderthal in his cave, mm -hmm. as Tom Sowell wrote years ago, had all the material resources we have today. Mm -hmm. All the advance is increase in knowledge. And uh, growth is learning. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, the reason all the consulting groups, when they analyze businesses, find learning curves everywhere, and why Ray Kurzweil envisages these, a singularity of yeah. converging learning curves, it's because learning is the heart of economic growth. Learning is economic and it's, growth. And it's learning, I mean, it's to economize, to, to, you know, so every time we start a fire, we don't have to go through 10,000 years of Neanderthal That's learning, right? right? That, that. So capitalism is deflationary because it always takes, it, it ultimately it, takes less time and less resources to get things done. That, that's right. Why go, are people afraid of 20 to 30 yeah. percent a year, yeah. 20 to 30 percent for every doubling of total units is so, the learning curve. Okay. So why are people afraid of deflation then? Because, because this is like, uh, Because yeah. governments constantly... Uh, screw up economies mm -hmm. and causing and screw up monetary systems and cause prices to go up mm -hmm. and and uh, blame uh, the currency. So I, before we get back to Bitcoin, though, you know, but then will people invest in things if they say, oh, well, my house, you know, it's worth 100 grand now. And in 20 years, if capitalism is working, it'll be worth 20 grand. Who's going to buy a house? Wealth, everything around the house will have increased in value. Uh, all uh, equipment in the house will be enhancing right. your life. And whether the shell of that you yeah. erected in 2014 will... No. I just think it's a meaningless question. Right. Okay. The, the process by which... Uh, learning pervades the economy, produces a cornucopia. So and what is, that yeah. does is uh, led me to the further insight about Bitcoin. Yeah, well, well, okay, now let's talk about how is Bitcoin deflationary? Because, you know, uh, if you were lucky enough to buy Bitcoin a few years ago, you're wealthy now, especially <laughs> if you take it out of the internet and, yeah. and lock Satoshi's it down. Satoshi's worth a billion yeah. bucks, baby. <laughs> so, so how is it deflationary then? Uh, uh, or, or when do we get to the point where Bitcoin is no longer a speculative currency or well, a speculative when it, when good? It, you know, the speculation yeah. is, is a big debate yeah. over how what proportion of the world's transactions Bitcoin will mm -hmm. finally... Uh, uh, accommodate. But Bitcoin is currently undergoing a market process, but right. when it reaches its full maturity with 21 million coins, right. which is the cap, right. uh, asymptotic cap that's been imposed right. through the algorithm itself, right. which assures that it means that uh, that it will tend to be deflationary. That because it, there'll it be tend, more, but, but more goods chasing after the same number yeah, of bitcoins. That's right. yeah. But this is this is life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when and really the other way I came to this insight is of the zero marginal cost society. You've mm -hmm. heard about that. That. Uh, that uh, capitalist economics doesn't work anymore because we're in a world of abundance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but money can't be un uh, abundant in the same way that mm -hmm. uh, goods and services are. But money has to be the foundation to prioritize right. and va evaluate. So the question is, what is scarce when everything else becomes abundant? Mm -hmm. And what is scarce when everything else becomes abundant uh, is uh, ultimately the residual resource time. Okay. So and how does Bitcoin? Now we're going from Bitcoin to time. So well, what? How does that? Because uh, the production of Bitcoin is rigorously mm -hmm. regulated by the passage of time, mm -hmm. and 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 the pursuit of irreversibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bitcoin is, you know, Satoshi all through his original paper talks about irreversible currency. That's right. the big goal. And uh, what the only that, what, thing in the universe that's really irreversible in this sense is time. Okay. And, uh, so obviously Satoshi didn't see the first Superman movie. The first <laughs> Superman goes back in time, but there is no going back in time. Yeah. But then what happened? I mean, like, how is, is it that Bitcoin will, is infinitely divisible? Or, it, yes, I mean, it, because, it is, I mean, so we don't it need... Is div it's divisible yeah. to a hundred millionth of I mean, because in a, of in a, a kind Bitcoin. of Milton Friedman wet dream, uh, you know, you would have a government or a, or a robot kicking out a certain amount of predetermined expansion of money, yeah. you know, on a regular basis, no matter on what. On the assumption of inflation. Right. And Milton Friedman was the greatest figure in libertarian economics. Right. I don't deny it for a minute. 
but he did make a major error. Mm -hmm. MV equals PT. That's his great formula. The money supply times the velocity mm -hmm. equals output. But what we've learned overwhelmingly in recent mm -hmm. years is velocity is not a constant. Mm -hmm. uh, Milton Friedman thought that the money supply controlled. And because he thought the money supply controlled, he thought you had to have some centralized control of money. Mm -hmm. And that the central body that controlled the emission of money uh, would should be regulated right. to accommodate economic growth, right. which was... Uh, uh, and he's, he, he was wrong in thinking that you need money, a growth in the money supply to have economic growth. Yes, and, and, it, and that uh, money rules yeah. rather than velocity. He mm -hmm. thought velocity was a constant and the money supply mm -hmm. could be manipulated by governments to right. actually favor right. outcomes. So, and I, I think that uh, velocity rules, and velocity means we can rule, that mm -hmm. Bitcoin as a... Uh, currency on the internet, peer-to-peer, -peer, managed by the participants mm -hmm. in it, is uh, the this perfect is, libertarian solution to the money you, enigma. You have been, uh, you know, a, a, a proselytizer for the idea that we've, con you know, continually, at least in 20th century terms, have gone from a totalitarian or a hierarchical yeah. society to a heterarchical That's society. That's right. So Bitcoin is kind of like, a you know, one of the, yeah, it, it's the money. ultimate. Let me ask you this, though, because there's, so there's the question of there's the real world or, you know, what we'll call the real world and the Internet up here. Bitcoin's operating up here. People are trading all around the world. Mm -hmm. We've already seen cases where the government goes in and shuts things down and takes Bitcoin. And, you know, why, you know, are we just deluding ourselves that we're in our little happy space up here? And the minute any government wants to, they're going to come in and, you know, the guys with guns, you know, guns, you know, may not fire in cyberspace, but they don't have to. So. Mm -hmm. Is this all just kind of a, you know, a fantasy, a cloud cuckoo land? I, I think that uh, this is an infrastructure for the Internet. Mm -hmm. The government can always come with guns and attack our human yes. bodies and require us to report everything mm -hmm. we do with our bitcoins and, and uh, otherwise invade our lives and manipulate mm -hmm. our futures and close down our horizons. But, but because bitcoin is autonomous because it's really peer-to-peer -peer. Mm -hmm. it really is and because it's uh, distributed inexorably and because it's global it's gonna I, I think government will not choose to close it down I mm -hmm. think government will probably decide mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, to say that we got a report on our tax returns and everything that goes on in bitcoins, and uh, moreover, uh, the government will, will we welcome that? the aspect yeah. of Bitcoin that every transaction is published. Right, right. That's the way it works. Yeah. And uh, which is a fascinating misconception, I think, early on of Bitcoin is that it was a great anonymous you know mechanism because you you know you just gave it away and that was it it wasn't traceable well, it's, it's the reverse it's actually that every transaction is known to everybody in the network that's right except that they know it as a transaction right they and so it is cash as it were right, right. It, it's not it's a lot more anonymous than mm -hmm. submitting your credit card sure. and your yeah. mother's maiden name and all the hustles where for free goods you have to virtually uh, mm -hmm. strip naked on mm -hmm. the, in front of your internet camera. Yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, I, it's I, a I, lot. Look, I it's apologize a, for that, and I'm not going to send that type of stuff to you anymore. Oh, all right. okay. That's a big, a big relief. Really. <laughs> so we're we're early on in kind of the regulatory attempts to regulate Bitcoin. What do you think of the early attempts by the IRS I, or the I Treasury? Think. I mean, it doesn't even matter. But you know, on the one hand, is it money that, can, or is it is it a is it a commodity that gets taxed? I mean, are these these are not important questions to you in the well, long run? Well, I, th I think that it it they made the right decision that. Uh, People who buy them as uh, who are participating in the speculation mm -hmm. about the ultimate success of mm -hmm. Bitcoin do do have capital gains, and mm -hmm. it's just as well to have them. You know, they can. You know, if we're going to have a capital gains tax, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin profits yeah. are suitably taxed through that mm -hmm. system. So I, I don't think that's 
an outrage or an no. obstacle to the success of the system. Uh, final question. I mean, you, you, I mean, you talk in a, kind of in your work over the course of your career. It's interesting. I mean, and here you're very enthusiastic about this, you know, an in internet where it's a peer-to-peer -peer distributed network mm -hmm. that is now building a civilization. It's not simply parallel. Are you thinking about moving to the internet? anytime soon. And, uh, <laughs> if you do, well, you promise to write or come home on holidays. But I say, like, I mean, it, it, you know, are, are you talking about a kind of singularity type of, or singularity is the wrong word, but like kind of a migration to, you know, this electronic distributed network, and that's where real meaning will be, what, real consciousness? Um, I mean, is that, is that where you're going with I, stuff? I, I think uh, those are interesting speculations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm interested, though now, as a business proposition. Mm -hmm. I got a company that I'm doing with Stephen Spray called Rivets that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, using the trusted platform, not the trusted platform module, but a mm -hmm. similar kind of uh, secure uh, vault uh, function mm -hmm. to create a, a secure uh, Bitcoin wallets because uh -huh. the the Bitcoin uh, system is vulnerable not in the blockchain it's great uh, advance but in all the interfaces right. to the blockchain and so I think it's a great business opportunity mm -hmm. and so does all of Silicon Valley think mm -hmm. it's a great business opportunity. Mark Andreessen, who I wrote mm -hmm. about in Forbes ASAP mm -hmm. decades ago, is the leading yeah. exponent of Bitcoin and, and John Doerr has finally mm -hmm. succumbed and there you know there's a whole Well so what you know final uh, final thought uh, how do you tell the uh, the kind of backward looking reactionaries who are like no it's all about gold it's all about silver it's all about current you know paper currency you know should they just give up or uh, you know how do you I mean gold that? is still important I mean yeah. gold and bitcoin share this uh, fundamental roots in time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, they aren't chiefly governed by the capital function. Their the capital changes and is volatile, and uh, is thus not a stable source mm -hmm. of uh, measurement. And it's time that's a source of measurement. And both gold and Bitcoin share this uh, feature. And gold has really important. Uh, value as an insurance currency, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, the internet collapses or, mm -hmm. you know, there are all sorts of reasons for gold being important. Right. And gold and bitcoins, I think, will converge in value because they both uh, are intrinsic monetary so They're like the elements. sunny and share of the internet, yeah. right? You, you want <laughs> yeah. them both. My book is going to be called Bitcoin and Gold, oh. and, and I, okay. I actually have, have made things that are amazing discoveries to me. Nobody mm. understood, understood what Newton was doing. Mm. Isaac Newton, during his 30 years running the Mint, was actually inventing the gold standard and getting rid of silver and, mm -hmm. uh, and creating a, a currency that could sustain the British Empire wow. and, and hacking gold. Hmm. Newton's alchemy, oh, yeah. people disparaged Newton. He went crazy, yeah. he became an alchemist. What he was doing was hacking gold, proving that gold couldn't be reverse engineered, just as all the Bitcoin hackers yeah, so he, are trying I mean, to- He was the anti-alchemist then. Yeah, you know that you yeah. couldn't make fake gold. You can yeah, only make right. real gold. That's interesting. Well, we will leave it there, George Gilder. Who uh, your latest book is "Knowledge and Power: The Information Theory of Capitalism and How It Is Revolutionizing Revolutionizing Our World." And you are a Bitcoin evangelist uh, in the same way that uh, uh, Isaac Newton was an evangelist against the Catholic Church. Uh, he spent, <laughs> okay. uh, he, you know, whatever he was doing, <laughs> whatever it was. He spent, no, he spent a lot of time calling the Pope a werewolf yeah, yeah, and yeah, reading yeah. the Book of Revelation. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Bitcoin is the future, says you, right? I think so. All right. Very good. George yep. Gilder, thanks for talking to Reason TV. Thank you so much. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.